one simple click, a second of your time. It's the difference between making it home to your loved ones or not making it home at all. Whether you're a driver or a passenger, make the life-changing choice to wear a seatbelt every drive, every time. It's not just the law, it's common sense. Buckle up, PA. Learn more at pennpagovernor slash safety. Paid for with Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. 746, 14 away from 8 o'clock. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. Mr. Bob Pollock is with us this morning. Bob Pollock joins us from the extension each Friday at this time. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, voted Best Personal Injury Law Firm, Best of Indiana County Contest, Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Uh, and you can give us a call at 479-1160 if you have a question for Bob, or 349-WCCS, that's 349-9227. So I, I hinted, I didn't just hint, I, I outright said I've got a rarity to discuss with you today. Um, uh, on one of our nearby properties uh, in our neighborhood, a trillium is growing. Uh, and the bloom season is just over. It's just, it's lost its blooms, but I'd never heard of a trillium. And the story of the trillium is, is a pretty fascinating thing. This is a, a really pretty flower and it's a pretty big plant. So are you familiar with the trillium? A little bit. Yes. Uh-huh. And how but rare. Not, I haven't read the, the story of it though. Yeah. Well, the story of it is, um, they have a seed that has a uh, a little white or a sweet covering over top of it. And ants just love them. So ants store them. They take the seed and down into the earth, they store them there. And if one of them doesn't get eaten, uh, there's the possibility it'll germinate, but it has to go through two cold seasons. So it takes it two years to germinate. It takes it five to seven years to bloom. And then it finally blooms only in the wild unless people are actually raising them uh and and that's the story of the trillium uh and it's a it, the flower blooms white and then it turns pink uh in its final days that's the story there you go isn't that a pretty cool amazing story? how'd you come across that uh On he did of, the, oh he oh, the neighbor, neighbor was did. uh the neighbor was uh string trimming ah. uh and uh, along along a run there and uh, just clearing out some brush, and he saw this thing blooming and said, what is that? So it, it's cool. He took me over, yeah. and I saw it yesterday. All right. Nice stuff. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. They're probably, did he find any more? No, just that, that one. Just that one. Just hmm. that one blooming right there. I'm right there. So we'd like to thank the ants for that, Yeah. <laughs> for for not eating the seed, uh, and... Uh, and thank the Trillium for blessing us. I had a picture uh, on his phone that he sent to me, but it didn't mm. come through, so I haven't ah, gotten okay. that. Okay, you haven't gotten the picture. Uh-uh. But yeah, they're a interesting plant, interesting flower. So I like it. Yeah, I like it. Folks there you go. Are, now, now you'll have to see. Go back to that spot next year. Next year. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, it it reminds us though that it's flower planting time. Yes. And uh, people will be taking flowers to uh, cemeteries, planting them uh, in, in cemeteries. Uh, they'll be putting flower beds around their houses. I'm sure that many have done this already. Uh, and hanging baskets. And uh, and there are a lot of people that uh, will just buy the flat of flowers, and they'll make their own. They'll make their own creation. So what I wanted to ask you is, are there certain flowers because I, I know that we've discussed this before with vegetable gardens. Are there certain flowers that should not be planted with other flowers because they'll be taken over or just not grown? Yes. <laughs> Some of the uh, more vining flowers can mm-hmm. t- overtake others. Uh, some of those are can be a little bit aggressive, but some will hang down too, so... You know, they might be more prostate growing, but then they'll they'll flow down over the container. Uh-huh. Um, and that's that's a little bit different. That's okay. Uh, just kind of have to match up. Look at your container or your planting area and kind of pick plants that will fit there. 
and look at the spacing. Mm-hmm. You know, most of the the tags that come with the plant will have, you know, space them 12 to 18 inches apart, or it'll grow, you know, 8 to 12 inches tall and yeah. 10 to 12 wide. Uh, try to, to match that up so that you have enough space um, and you can space them out far enough to let them mature and, and grow into what they're supposed to. Well, we do that in our vegetable gardens. We know that our tomato plants are going to spread out and that our, yeah. our vining cucumbers and, and melons, uh, that they need, they need room to crawl along the ground. Um, uh, but I, I never really considered it in terms of flowers, that uh, flowers and, will spread like that. Of course, there's, there's artistic ability to that, to those designs, um, and you know, picking plants that might be taller uh, in the center, and then surrounding that with plants that won't get as large because you know, you're trying to, you know, match up. Well, you've, you have all kinds of things going on potentially. You have color um, of foliage. You have color of flowers. You have texture. So how coarse or fine textured the plant is or the flower is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that growth habit you know, you you're kind of have to look at all those things. So it's kind of like designing a, um, uh, you know, flowers that you would get from the florist. Same, uh-huh. same kind of design. Same concept. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just these are growing but flowers. But you have, right, but you have a lot of different things to pick from and think about, you know, when designing that container um, so that, but, you know, there's a lot of give and take there. It sort of do a lot of mixing and matching and and you can try things out and you know and if you get it done um you might not have the plants in flower yet you might just have the plants Mm -hmm. um they might be starting to flower they might be in bud you're not quite sure how it's going to work out yeah you know you you can adjust that down the road you can take Mm -hmm. some things out and replace that or put some other things in as a growing season gets going uh, before they, you know, completely become a root mat in that, in that planter. Well, let's talk about deadheading uh, because uh, there are plants that will, um, they'll bloom a beautiful flower and you, you're, you're in love with them and all of a sudden you come out the next morning and, well, that thing is one big dead sorry looking mess. Uh, and so you have to get that head off. If if you don't take that head off, then you're probably not going to get more blooms like that. Is that's, that the case? That not always anymore. There are plants that will you don't have to deadhead at all. Um, so it it really is b- based on the plant that you have um, and the cultivar that you have. Because some older cultivars, yes, you had to go in and deadhead things, um, but some of the newer varieties and cultivars of plants as well as species uh they'll take care of that on their own um so you can that's another thing you can look for if you want a lower maintenance system then look for those plants that potentially fit into that Mm -hmm. where you don't have as much work to do Mm -hmm. Um, and and also then as the season goes uh, some some flowers are more prone to pest issues uh, especially mites, spider mites, um, which are hard to see. You can see them. It helps to have some magnification. The, probably the first thing we notice is the plant is not, doesn't look quite right. The color's not quite right. Um, it's a lighter color. It's starting to fade out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then if we look closer, we, we might see webbing in there, um, real fine webbing. We might see uh, some leaves starting to, to yellow, to brown, to drop out. Uh, at that point, a lot of damage is done. But of course, mites are sucking insects, so they're removing the plant sap. And then as they do that, um, the chlorophyll, which gives us the green color in the leaves, leaves, and so then you get that fading. And that's kind of the first sign. It just it starts to fade out in color. Uh, but some some plants are very susceptible to that and others aren't. So you just have to, you know, look for that, watch that when you're watering containers. Uh, sometimes it's easier to catch those things 
when you have plants in containers because you you're watering them often, mm-hmm. and so you're there looking while you're watering, and you can pick some of that stuff up easier than you can some, on some other plants. Yeah, yeah. But, well, you know, it, it, it's interesting, and it gives you a, a new respect for for the people who put the hanging baskets together at the <laughs> and the other displays, the potted displays at the greenhouses and and. Uh, some of the nurseries uh, they're they're really doing a job yes and the breeders um you know a lot of you may not have to mix colors a lot of flowers these days are multiple colored flowers um so the combination of colors is already there and you don't have to you don't have those solid colors that you need to mix and match yeah and combine together all right well the little flower discussion going on here today on Indiana in the morning, couple of minutes left. Uh, we are thinking about getting uh, out into the garden, but the wa- the ground is so wet still. Um, um, I know the growing season is what the growing season <laughs> is, um, and but what we're starting to wonder, uh, you know, are we going to get the kind of time that we want? Are we going to be harvesting later in the year uh, than normally we might because it's just been so wet we can't get in? And sometimes we try to start too early. Plants can catch up. Um, you know, weather-wise, if we have, you know, next week, looks like we're going to have a string of 80-degree days. Mm -hmm. Um, So we can gain a lot of growing degree days if we have the plants in the ground um, during those periods of time. So it won't necessarily be delayed. um, Or just by planting a week or two weeks later, may not, you may not lose anything Uh when it's all said and done. So if we have warmer weather conditions and we have enough moisture or you can supplement uh, watering if things get dry, then we may still be right on track. Yeah. It's just sometimes we try to force that. We we put stick things in the ground when the ground's cooler than Mm -hmm. optimum um, as the air is also cooler than optimum, although that hasn't really been the case this spring. What, you but just that wonder, will slow plants. Yeah. Plants will sit there and not grow as fast, you know, and just waiting two weeks, let that soil warm up five or ten degrees can make a big difference in those plants, you know, starting yeah. taking off and growing. If, of course, if you wait long, what, what it does is it puts you in danger at the end of the cycle. Yes, if you have um, those. Coming into frost season. And, right. And so those are things to Yeah, consider. especially for those longer – those plants that take the full season to mature. Yeah. Right. That we push with those things. Yes. Yeah. All right. Next week, I want to ask you about Canadian wildfires, the effect that they had last year and the fact that they say that we're going to have them again this year and how that affects the growing season. Bob will be with us next week. We hope it's Indiana in the morning on WCCS. Rev up your excitement, folks. Luther Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Northern Cambria proudly presents their spectacular new car inventory sale. Only at Luther Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, they're your 2024 Jeep Compass headquarters. Choose from over 30 new compasses in stock. Check out these unbeatable deals. The all-new 2024 Jeep Compass starting at $25,950 or buy it for just $299 per month. With $6,000 down plus tax and tax, 84 months at 6.99% with approved credit must qualify for all rebates through Chrysler Capital. See dealer for details. Or if you prefer leasing, lease a 2024 Compass for only $289 per month with $6,800 due at signing. Plus tax and fees due, 42 months, 10,000 miles per year must qualify for all rebates and approved credit from Chrysler Capital. See dealer for details. But that's not all. With your new vehicle purchase, receive a complimentary maintenance package. Visit them online at luthercdjr.com. Don't worry about credit. No problem. Call their lucky number at 814-948-7777 and ask.